Greetings guys. Time for a little update on my 10 gigahertz uh, transmission system. Microwave point-to-point -point link. It's a transverter essentially. Um, what have I done so far? Well, I suggest you go uh, see those uh, previous four videos. In the first video I showed you my, the dish I'm going to use. In the second video I discussed the transition, so the, at the end of the feed point where the electronics will connect there's what we call a transition from waveguide to coaxial cable so that's what I discussed, the plans I had to create a transition in the third video I made that transition and I showed you the result in the fourth video I tested the transition to find out that it's it's perfect we're ready to go so dish and transition so the passive stuff essentially I'm good to go now time to talk about electronics in this fifth video that's what I'm going to cover so I'm going to show you a few block diagrams so I'll be putting together a transverter so what is it it's a transmit and receive converter so we call it a transverter in ham radio. Basically, I'm going to use a regular 2 meter radio, 144 megahertz, which we call the IF radio, the intermediate frequency radio. We'll use that 144 megahertz and boost it up to 10.3 gigahertz. Okay, so IF radio, CW, sideband, whatever mode we want to use, doesn't matter. Um, this is powerful radio, right? A few watts out. That's too much energy. We're going to have to attenuate this uh, to go down into the milliwatts range. And this 144 megahertz signal in the transmit path, we're sending this into a balance mixer. So a mixer will create the product of the IF port and the LO port. Our local oscillator is the source of microwave signal that we will mix with our IF signal. So the frequency we want in order to get to our target frequency, which is 10.368 GHz, so 10,368 megahertz. If we want to do that, there are a few ways to do, but we can subtract the 144 megahertz from the 10,368, which gives us 10.224 megahertz. So our LO, local oscillator, will provide a signal in the milliwatts range as again uh, into our mixer with the uh, 144 megahertz and both together will create our 10.368 gigahertz signal it'll be in the milliwatts range and we will pump it up we'll boost it into the watts range and send it to our dish antenna that's a very simplistic block diagram just to show you the principle of the transverter you're going to see the next chart I will blow it up into smaller pieces in the receive path we'll use the same balance mixer pick up our 10 gigahertz 10 368 signal we will pa pass it through a preamplifier a, a low noise amplifier why because the rest of the circuitry especially the balance mixer is noisy so by pre-boosting the signal with a very low noise amplifier, it will essentially beat the noise generated by this part and the other parts and will make a signal that can be easily received and a very small signal into a sensitive receiver. So that's the principle of preamplifiers. The first stage is noise figure is really important because the following stages their noise figure their contribution is divided down by the gain of the first stage so to always important first stage noise figure so we'll put an, a low noise preamplifier here and then the rest doesn't have to be as low noise okay so we're sending again our 10 368 megahertz signal into the balance mixer into the rf board mixed with our same local oscillator same frequency will get us down to 144 megahertz to receive by our rf radio it will likely be an ft817 from yezu a radio i already own so, so these are the two paths we're going to exploit
Now, this is a blown up version of uh, the previous uh, block diagrams merged together. We have the both the transmit path and the receive path combined onto that chart. It's a lot of blocks. I suggest we start with the most important thing that without that, we can't go anywhere, and it's the local oscillator. The blocks here that are in orange. We have our mixer, we have our IF path here, and we have our RF path at 10 gig here. We'll look at those a little later. For now, let's concentrate on the local oscillator chain. How can I create a signal at 10.224 gigahertz with a power of 10 milliwatts plus 10 dBm, it's 10 milliwatts. Zero dBm, it's one milliwatt. So 10 dB more than, than one milliwatt is 10 milliwatts. Okay, so, well, we start with a very stable source and it can be of low frequency. This is what I have here. It's a 10 megahertz oscillator. It's an ovenized oscillator. We call it an OCXO ovenized control oscillator. So it's kept at high temperature and it's a very stable circuit for the oscillator all into a small can and that's contained into this box and it can be adjusted with the potentiometer to a very stable 10 megahertz frequency. Why stable? Well because any drift of your 10 megahertz signal will multiply up to 10 gigahertz. So it'll be a factor of a thousand more drift than the drift we see here on the 10 megahertz signal. So it has to be stable and it has to be no noise free as well because any noise on that signal will also get superimposed to a certain degree onto our 10 gigahertz signal and that's going to get superimposed onto our output signal and our receive signal as well. So that part here is really important, and I have it already. Uh, 10 megahertz OCXO. Those OCXOs are usually used in high-end test instruments and on GPS-derived uh, 10 megahertz references as well. So that, check, I have it. Now, what am I going to use to multiply the frequency up? Well, there are several ways we can do it. We could use active multipliers that would pick up the harmonics of that 10 megahertz signal. So you take the 10 meg and you push it into an amplifier. That amplifier distorts, so it creates some harmonics at higher frequencies. You pick up one of these harmonics and you send it to another amplifier that will distort again and that will create more harmonics of the higher uh, frequencies. You pick up the right harmonics using filters and then you amplify at the end and you get your 10 gigahertz signal. That's one way to do it. But nowadays there's, there's good ways as well. And it's basically synthesizers, single synthesizers. And here's one. It's an ADF 4351. It's an analog device chip with all the peripheral components that make it work. This can pump out a signal from 35 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz. We're not at 10 gig yet, but we can generate, for example, a signal at 3.3 gigahertz and multiply that by three to make it to the 10 gigahertz. So that's what I plan to do, is to use this to generate a 3.4 gigahertz signal and get to 10.224 with it. It's actually 34.08, if you multiply that by 3, you get to 10.224. Um, so this board is kind of cheap, about $20, and you'll see it later. And uh, it's not the purest signal that you get out of this, and there are harmonics you need to filter, okay? So pick up the right harmonic, but it's very stable in frequency. It's a bit noisy in terms of phase noise, but it's good enough for our application. So this is what I'm going to use. I'll show that to you later. So now that we have our 3408 megahertz signal, we can select that signal if we wish, 
Maybe we need, maybe we won't. I don't know. We, we can also pick up the right harmonic later at 10 gigahertz. Because the other harmonics are so far away that it may not be a requirement to tune this one in. But it could be a good idea to pick up only that harmonic. And then using a MMIC uh, monolithic amplifier. So it's a very small device, 50 ohm in, 50 ohm out. You saturate that amplifier and it will distort and create harmonics. And then you select with a bandpass filter the 10 gigahertz, the 10.224 uh, signal. Maybe with one filter, maybe with two. Maybe one filter here, the other one placed later. In any case, you need to amplify because in the process of um, creating uh, harmonics, those harmonics created are not as uh, powerful as uh, the fundamental signal you sent in into the amplifier. So you have to boost that signal. So we can filter, boost, maybe a few stages to get there. And finally, you have a signal that's powerful enough and filtered. Maybe a filter here, like I said, maybe not. Probably yes. Um, you may have actually a too hot of a signal because the gain through these amplifiers, you don't adjust it. Okay, So you may have to overshoot a bit and then attenuate to get to around plus 7 to plus 10 dBm into the balance mixer. Okay, So that's the chain I will be working on uh, and I will show you the results in my next video because I've already started and it, it looks uh, promising. At the very least, I'll be trying the 10 MHz OCXO into the 3408 synthesizer and then um, multiply by three, no filtering, but at least multiply by three with an ERA and see what kind of signal we get at 10 gig. Is it enough? Is it powerful enough or not? So that's what I'm going to do in the next video. Until then, 7-3.